Okay. Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to focus on the USAS account changes and different ways to make modifications on the accounts from the transactions that are already there. So let's begin on the wiki page. So you know where we got that PowerPoint. So where you registered for this under the trainings and registration page under our date. Here's the PowerPoint if you click on it and download it. And then later the recording link will be right here. Later or Tuesday. One of the two. My motto is always, if you have a question, please let us know, because if you're thinking of one, somebody else is also. So no question is dumb. OK, so what is an account change? From my years of working in uh, school finance, I've heard it referenced in many ways, um, including account change, merging of accounts, or collapsing of accounts. But it's essentially the same thing. It is the same thing. It's the process that changes all the transactions from one account to another, and it does that for just the fiscal year, for the current fiscal year. So essentially, the merging of accounts and collapsing of accounts describes what it does. It merges all the transactions or collapses all the transactions from the old account into the new account. So essentially, the process updates all the transactions, including purchase orders, checks, receipts, as well as it updates the expenditure accounts and the revenue accounts. And it only, again, updates the figures for the current fiscal year. So this way, it preserves the accurate historical data and the reports in the file archive for fiscal year 22, for example or the reports that you can generate today for the prior year, or again, the example of fiscal 22, those won't be changed because the account change in this current fiscal year 23 is only gonna change the transactions this year. It's a little bit different than the classic software. So the process marks the original accounts, the one that you're transferring the monies from, those accounts will be marked inactive. And the whole process, you can process both revenue and expenditure accounts at the same time, as well as processing multiple account changes at the same time. The, own, the one restriction is the account change process does uh, require the accounts involved must be from the same fund. So let's go into the system and I'll show you some of these things on the next slide. I'll be following kind of the slide and later we'll be creating an account change for both an expenditure account and a revenue account. And then later we'll get into like um, distributions and error corrections as well. <clears throat> So you can find the account change under utilities, the second one. And notice that we have expenditure accounts and revenue accounts on the grid. We have a little drop down here that if I had any for fiscal year 22, they would show. And then next year, fiscal 24. Uh, we'll go over the create and account change in a moment. But I wanted to go over the statuses. There are a couple statuses showing on the grid. New is the ones that haven't even been um, check mark to apply. There's completed, those account changes have been processed, failed with an error message that we can ignore right now. Um, and then there's one more status that when you click, and I'll show you this in a moment, when you click on it, 
it'll say running or in process. So these buttons or icons are familiar to us. The eyeball is view. And we'll view, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the more button, well, that's what I was gonna say, the view button, if you click on it, it's gonna give you the same details that are already on the grid. Same with the more button. Sometimes on other grids, you can pull more information, in, but you see they're all checked. So if you did want to narrow down something on this grid, I mean, mine's only, mine's a small grid of transactions, but here's a button of advanced query that you can further sort your results from the grid. So for example, I'm just gonna do a simple one. Uh, let's say the status equals inactive. Actually, my example in my notes isn't here. <laughs> So we'll do new. Once I apply this, it's going to show me the results down here. So you see these, you have more options over here where you can further sort this grid. And again, this advanced query button is on, I believe, every grid. So I'm going to show you another way to use this button later as well. But there's one tip of uh, querying further down on the information on the account change grid. To get rid of this, you can clear the query. Oh, you could also have saved that by uh, putting a name in here, save, and then the file name or whatever. I don't know. I don't have one in here currently. To get rid of this top grid, you just click hide. There's also a reset button that would just reset everything on your grid. Like it was when I first came in here. And again, these buttons are similar on every other grid too. I'm just going on over some of the functions uh, regarding the account change. So a few more things before we actually create one. There are some restrictions on the process. For example, I mentioned it had to have the same cash account. So cash accounts with a special cost center of 0000, 000 through 8999 or anything under 9,000 also must have that same special cost center in that. Uh, range. And the reason is those, I don't know if the PowerPoint would help, but like this account is going to actually roll up to this account. And I'll show you this error in the system. So if I went to create one, And I'm crossing fund because it's 006000 versus 9023. It's going to give me an error that it must be in the same range. So this is saying since this is 000, it must be between zero and 8999. Similarly, similar, you're going to get an error if you try to um, cross funds with, with the 9,000 special cost center. So ex for example, uh, what was I gonna pull up?
If I was going to try to change it from 9921 to 9922 and try to save it, it's going to say that it must match. So we'll give you an example of how to actually. Um, I was going to give you another example too, because this is going to be the example that I'm going to show how to get around basically making these modifications that you want to do that crosses these funds. So again, later, I'll show you how to do this piece of change from 9218 to 9318, because in the account change process, it's going to throw you the error because you can't do it here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what can you do? Some examples are um, like this row. It's changing the subject code, but it's the same account. Another example would be to change like the retirement object code with a um, OP with a different OPU. Another example would be a grant account from well, maybe supplies to I don't know if this is books or software, but basically from one supply account to another account within the same fund. So those are like the examples of count change. And let's go ahead and create one. You would click on this create. Now, if you're doing a revenue, um, you could start by typing the TI slash, and then it'll start populating the revenue counts. And then you could just, you know, continue on because it's gonna to default to expenditure accounts. So first, actually I was gonna get one applied ahead of time because that's gonna take some process. So the one that I was gonna click and show you, like we, we'll pretend we just entered this and it's from, a different function, same account. So we're different software accounts. That's gonna show as a status of new on the grid. You would to like implement this account change, you would click here and apply. And you can see it'll give you or the user the notification that the account change has started. Now, if you wanted to click another one, it's gonna say, Another one is currently in progress, and so you can't do that. So to follow the status of your account change, the process, you can continually like refresh this page. Or like here, it just changed to in progress. Or you can go under utilities and the job scheduler. And you can see this status is running and it's a, oops, count change. If you did have a lot of things in this job scheduler, you could filter the grid by using like, are these percentage signs, signs? and then type in a count change and it would just pull in whatever account change process is in the job scheduler. Again, this has the refresh button too. But what the system is doing is updating all the transactions and all the purchase orders and all the receipts from July. So it will take some time to complete. However, this is one way you can watch the progress of completion or on the grid of account change. So any questions so far?
you will get an error, and I'm going to go to a different instance. You will get an error in the system if you have a prior fiscal year open. So let's look at the posting periods. I am in June 2023. But you can see last year, oops, last year, 2022 is open. So if I go to do an account change, it'll give you the warning. I don't know if that's too small. But it says, um, warning fiscal year 2022 must be closed to process, the, to process this account change for fiscal year 23. So that shows you the warning. I didn't have um, the prior year open in this database. Oh, that rule? or that, that warning rule for the warning that is created from the rule is not mandatory. So the district or the user can disable it. And how you would find it is that it's not mandatory. And I would just do the, again, percentage sign and try to look for account chain. And you can see that it's enabled, but not mandatory. So if you wanted to disable it, you would click on here, save. We'll pretend it's unchecked. And then you have to activate the rules. Remember that. So just because you checked enabled until you activate the rule, it won't take effect. OK. One more bit of information about the process before we actually go and create the account change. And that is when, I wanted to talk about um, if an account change is set up on the USAS side, but on the payroll side, the employer distributions or the payroll submissions haven't been posted yet, the manual synchronization should be processed in the payroll side or USPS to sync those payroll accounts with these accounts. So to do that, you can right here. So this is my sample bill payroll uh, USPS. And we'll pretend there's a payroll that has the employer distributions or payroll submissions not submitted. So you would go here to synchronize your accounts. Any questions? Sorry, Pat, can you repeat that one more time? I was writing notes and then I didn't hear all of what you said. <laughs> oh, sure. If there's like an account change that is set up and the USPS employer distributions or the USPS payroll submissions haven't been posted, then a manual synchronization should be performed so that the accounts that have been like processed through account change. Let me let somebody in just a second. Oops. <laughs> So the synchronization on the payroll side syncs the accounts that have been changed over on the USAS side, if that makes sense. Sure does. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And you would just go to the USPS, this account synchronization, synchronization and it synchronize. And you see it's complete. All right, so USAS. Okay, so let's create an account change with an expenditure account. And I'll show you 
what it does, like from the account view, the report view and such. So before I would move any monies on accounts, I don't know if this is old fashioned or just a great tip, I would always look at the before picture of the account and the transactions. So the account that I'm um, wanting to move money from, I'll pull it up on the grid and show you why. Oops. So this is like a worker's comp. So we'll just say, for the sake of a scenario, we're just changing the, um, I don't know why that says stomach. It's an OPU. Interesting. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so the scenario is I want to take this account and move it to the OPU of 200. Actually, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Sorry. So I'm going to move the monies in my account change from 101 to 200. So I would look at the account and see this fiscal year, I have actually expended $1,000, which I can see on the grid too. So this account is going to become inactive after the account change process. And then this view is what it's going to look like under the OPU of 200. I would also run my purchase order detail to see what was out encumbered. Remember that? I had $100 encumbered, $1,000 expended on that account. So if I ran the budget summary, you can see that account, 101, is 1,000 encumbered, and I'm going to move it to 200, which has zero all the way across. So if I was curious to know what this $100 was in the encumbrance, then I would generate the purchase order detail. And it shows that it's this purchase order, sorry, this purchase order to American Fidelity with the $100. And then that purchase order is the one that was $1,000 paid. So there's my before picture. So to process the account change, again, we would go under the utilities, account change, if my new, well here, if my two account was not already set up, I could click on here and create my new expenditure account here. I'm using an example with an account that's already been set up, but the same thing for a revenue account. If you don't have the the two account that you're transferring money to or count changing to, then you can do it right here. So the example that I am going to use is from 101 OPU to 200. I save it. It does give me a warning that I'm crossing boundaries. It will let me move on or edit it. You saw, I don't know if you saw, there was an option to edit, but, but you could also go in here and edit as, as well. So the one that I just did was you could go in here and edit it if you needed to. Ooh, excuse me. So then to process it, 
we would check mark the one that we want to kick off and apply and apply. And so the other account change finished because this wouldn't have let us um, kick it off with apply if it had not been completed. But that, since that's going to take a while, I in the PowerPoint, I, I do have or I have examples of the reports. First, I want to show you what the, I think I have the account view. This was before. That's the account change that we just did. So since this is gonna take a while to process, we're gonna pretend that it's completed. And in this picture, you can see that in the old account, 101, it's marked as inactive and it has zero like for the expenditure, which you can't see in the screenshot, but this is fiscal year to date expended. It zeroed out the $100 encumbrance and it inactivated the account. Uh, and it moved it to the OPU of 200. So again, you find the 1,000 and the 100. If I ran the budget summary, I had, yep, you can see, whoops, that was the before. We'll just stick with the PowerPoint. Because this budget summary shows that from 101 is now zero and 200 is updated with 1,000 and 100. If this account with the OPU of 200 had monies already in there, and we did this transfer, this $1,000 would be added to the figure that was already on the account. So again, it merges or collapses it into one account. So that makes sense. If, you, if not, ask me questions. Another thing I would, if you were curious or wanted to look at, you could pull up the purchase order. Remember that $100 purchase order <clears throat> for, uh, I think it was American Fidelity. You pulled up that purchase order, you can see the account change also changed. I don't think I showed you the before picture of the purchase order, but I showed you the purchase order report. Questions on that? I'm going to check the status of the account change because next I would like to do, and you can see it's running, I would like to show a revenue account change set up. So while that's running, let's look at the before picture of the account to know what we're actually moving. So I am going to look at this account, the CAFE fund. And I don't know how many people have noticed this, but we have this new show active. So if I wanted to see all accounts. Oh, I only have two accounts here. But it might narrow down counts if this is unchecked or checked. So that's just something to mention. All right, so we have these two cafeteria revenue funds. As I'm like looking at my accounts, um, or analyzing my maybe my cash summary for the fiscal year end, I notice that this count that I used last year, we had receipts posted and the intention was to post it in this account. So this time we're gonna go from the OPU 
It just throws me for a loop there. <laughs> We're going to go for, from the OPU of 001 to 000. And what's going to happen with the fiscal year to date is this 1655 is going to be combined with this 1930. So we'll show you how that works too. So first, this is the from account. And we had 1655 received. So if you were curious to see what that involved, you could uh, generate a revenue, or a, well, yeah, a revenue account activity report. So you would go to the account activity, pick your revenue, pick the fiscal year, and this is my next example. So, So for the count that we're moving, that didn't work. But I got one over here, I have one over here. So this is the count that we're moving money from. We're gonna move it from 001 to 000. So there's your 1655 with three receipts. Another way to determine what receipts might be involved in that from account that you're gonna be changing to, just so you're aware, you can, this is my next example of using this advanced query. So we're limited <clears throat> by our options here, but to do a further search on the receipt grid, I would click advanced query. And I have the setup already, so I'm just gonna pull it up. But what I did was opened items, account, and then looked for the full account code, dragged it over here, made the operations equal. And then I put my account that I'm moving the money from. Then I came down here and I named it and I just named it with the account and I clicked save, which that enabled me to just pull it up to show you guys. So any questions on that, on how to save? Because that's handy. So I pull that up and then if I wanted to limit, like the fiscal year. And then click apply. My results are down here. It doesn't have a total here, but it does show you the three receipts involved that will be involved in the account change. And then this button here will actually give you a report if you wanted to. And again, that would show you the 1655 that you're going to move. There's those three receipts. Okay, so we're pretty confident about <laughs> what receipts and revenue accounts that we're moving. So okay, so that previous account change is completed in my notes. Let's kick that revenue. Did I kick that off already? I don't know if I'm losing myself in my notes or not. It does look like we did so, because it's right here, completed. So then the after effects, and I have those. There's the before. So I'm looking at like the count revenue grid. The after effect on the revenue account 
The before picture, now ignore this because I think it was a different number. I think it was 1930. Oh, here we go. That was the total. So we're moving 1655 and merging it into the revenue account of this UPO. So the after effect is those two got merged or collapsed into one. And notice the previous year received on that from or old account remained. So again, it reserve or preserves the historical data like it should because you didn't do the account change until this year. So last year should stay the same, but we merged the fiscal year to date received into the OPU of 000. Questions on anything of that? Oh, you know what? We can take, remember we looked at those three receipts. If you wanted to look at one of those receipts, one of them on that receipt ledger was this first one. And you can see maybe I didn't kick it off. The after effect is this receipt would be changed to zero, zero, zero. So after all your account changes and say it's June 30th and you want a report of all your account changes for um, this fiscal year, you can create one from the grid. Show you what that looks like. However, there's another one under the report manager called the account change report right here. And it will actually give you like the date and the timestamps that might be useful for a reference of some sort. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the first column created, it, it gives you the time. So if you had to do some research for some reason in the app log or whatever, the time is track there or run the audit report, you can track it by these times. And it shows you <clears throat> from account to the account, as well as the descriptions. And if you needed to sort or filter, you have that ability. Okay, so that's the account change process. Anybody have questions on that? Remember I said you couldn't cross funds. Now we do have a feedback issue and it is marked major and it is also a candidate for this year's roadmap and it would replicate what some of us are familiar with with the classic software called fund change. Now, when this is implemented, it's gonna work the same way as classic did. Um, and it's only gonna, trying to think how, it, it's only gonna move like this account to a new created fund. It's not gonna move it like from one fund to another. But to get around until this feedback is implemented or when, there is an FAQ in the appendix. I provided the link here that will um, give you that same blurb 
that I have here where you would create like budget adjustments or errors and distributions to move the amounts. So another way to make like adjustments on the accounts from the transactions that are on the system is distributions and error corrections. This allows the user to reduce the amount that's been expended on the original account and then expense them out into the new fund. So for example, you can see here, like it's not a very good screenshot, but it's enough to say that they're correcting a purchase order. So, and you can see they're crossing funds but I'll show you how this is tracked in a system too. Remember, account change collapsed all the activity into one account. This is gonna track every adjustment here. So we're fixing this purchase order from the special cost center of 9010 to 9534. So the account that you want to remove the money from is gonna be negative, like this negative 500. And the new account that you want to put the money back into would be a positive. So we have two examples here where they're moving the specific purchase order, like to correct the purchase order account from one account to another. So let's give you an example. And I'll just show you here. Actually, I have one of these saved. Either way, I can run one. So if I ran a cash summary, we're looking at our accounts, it's the end of the year. And I run, I'm gonna just run this so I can show you what I'm gonna look at. I'm looking at my accounts at the end of the year and I noticed that my 9218, which in my Sampleville schools represents fiscal year um, 22, but I noticed that I have receipts posted in last year's account when it really should be in this year's account with the um, special cost center 9318. So I want to cross funds and move this 1250 into this account. Okay, so how do I do that? We would go under transaction, distributions and corrections. This can be to correct a receipt or to correct purchase order. I'm gonna show you a receipt. You can see there's previous old ones in this database. We're gonna create one. This will auto-populate. This will default to the current date. And my, I don't know. Distribute. So I think also in the PowerPoint, I am skipping ahead, I apologize. I have, we looked at that count, but what, what was included in the 12, um, the 12,500 receipts. 
So since we always look at the before picture of, of the expenditure, we're gonna again do, we're gonna set one up, account, code. And what I'm doing here is looking to see what receipts are gonna be changed when I redistribute them, just so I have a paperwork or a trail. So we are doing the 200 fund. And the old account that I wanna move the money from is 9118. Hit apply. It's probably too big of a range. Okay, there we go. These are the receipts that are involved into this a cash account that we are gonna move. And again, if I ran a report, you can see it adds up to 12,500. So there would be my document for what I'm transferring. And it, you notice it's just in the fiscal year. Okay, so, Transaction, distributions, and error corrections. You see there was like six receipts. That's what I was going to show you on this PowerPoint. You can individually enter each one and make a trail like correct receipt 292605, correct receipt 292604. By subtracting the amount from the wrong account, which is 9218, and then adding the positive amount of 1250. 500 with the correct account. And it looks like I have an error here. <laughs> so I'll fix that in the, the saved PowerPoint out on the FISC web too. So we're gonna do that, but we're just gonna do a lump sum. I just wanted to show you, you do have that ability to make that detail. I'm just gonna do the negative from account that we're moving from and the positive is the amount that you're redistributing, redistributing it to. These might not be the exact same. Um, special cost centers I had in the PowerPoint. And if it's not, I think it was nine two. We get the idea. Once you click save, and again, I don't know if you're familiar with this. If I had another one to create. I click save with that check. It'll populate another screen. I want this just to close. So I'm gonna do that. Click save. Must be the same type because um, this is an expenditure and this is um, that's what I'm doing wrong. Had the wrong account. So removing the account from that receipt. Click save. It should be at the top. There we go. You can print it if you wanted to, but this is what it looks like. Like the other screen. Now, oh, and again, when you're making that entry, 
like what we just looked at. Let me pull it up. It's got to equal to zero. So if I left, this bottom has to equal to zero. So it can't be 12,000 and 12,500. It's got to equal. So now when we go to the accounts, the revenue accounts, Here's another tip too. Since you want, well, since I want to pull up 9218 as well as 9318, you can start with a nine, use a wild card, and then put one eight. And it'll pull up anything with nine, whatever, one eight. So now you can see that my 12,500. Successfully, successfully moved from 9218 to 9318. So now it's accurate. It shows 1,000 on the last year's account and 1,200 or 12,500 on the correct account. So again, account change merges and it collapses. When you look at the revenue account, Activity, I got one here. It's gonna show you all of the history. If I ran this report with an account change, none of the original receipts would show on the original account because that account is inactive, it zeroed out. In uh, distributions and error corrections, you can see that it's tracked. Here's 9218. Here's the original receipts. Here's where 9218 reverses them. And the transaction in to, or the distribution into the correct cash account. And then if I looked at the account, Same thing. Now the old account does remain active. It's not like the account change process where it automatically, but you can see that's been successfully zeroed out, just like the grid indicated. And then the before and after of the cash summary, you can see where the 12,500 got combined. To get a report of distributions and error corrections, since there are very old ones, if I hit this, I would probably want to filter before I use that report button here. But there is also a report under the report manager called errors and distributions, error corrections and supply distributions. That can be generated. F and L for fiscal year are my shortcuts. And you can see that of all the error corrections for the fiscal year. Here's the one that we just processed, the 12,500. So, like I said, the, um, this distribution and error corrections does maintain the history of the transactions and shows them moving actually to the new account. Any questions? It was probably a lot, but hopefully it was very helpful. We are. We don't have any fiscal Fridays with fiscal until July. I listed them here about what's coming up. 
So if there are no questions, I hope you all have a nice holiday weekend. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Pat. You too. Thanks.